isolate underneath. Put a hose pipe on, turn the isolation valve, and you've also got a drain valve on the heat exchanger. So you can use that for filling and purging the system or to drain down the heat exchanger and take the pressure out of the boiler. So a quick method to drain the boiler down, isolate it underneath, open the pressure release valve, then pull the pressure gauge cable out, unclip it, pull it out, you get a bit of water but that's fine. Then remove the NTC from the top and that'll give you a gravitational pull to draw it out. So start from the top. So first of all, you never screw the flues, they like movement in them. At the top, you've got a flue temperature sensor and it comes across and just there you've got the resistance reading. 10,000 ohms. So the flue temperature sensor, how does it work? So here you have a burner and you've got, some, you've got the heat exchanger here. So if there's no water in the heat exchanger, the heat from the burner will go straight through it and warm the flue temperature sensor up. If it's full of water, the heat won't go through it, it'll absorb the heat. So the flue temperature sensor is almost like a low pressure sensor. Here you've got NTCs, so to check them, pull them out and do a resistance reading. At the top, you've got a high limit stat. So to test the high limit stat, pull the cables off and check for continuity. A high limit stat is basically a bi-metal strip. Here, it'll be faulty because there's no continuity. When it's working, you'll get continuity. It's a high limit stat, continuity. Here you have a transformer. So if you've got no ignition, check for 240 volt just on the brown cable. With regards to the heat exchanger, always take it out every year and, and do a um, inspection of the heat exchanger. Clean it with vinegar or water from the condensation trap. You do not need to change the seals on this. That's to your discrepancy. You've got the hoses. So give the hoses a bit of a feel. If it's crunchy, isolate it from the bottom of the appliance. Remove all the debris into a container and reconnect it. The fan, so to test the fan, you've got a brown there, check 242 it. The fan uses PWM, so it measures the revolutions of the fan, so if you get a problem with the fan, you'll get a fault code. So this is the 200 range. Now the 200 range, it uses a lambda sensor. So basically, the gas valve stays open and the fan roughly stays at the same speed. So to adjust the heat from the burner, you've got a stepper motor. So the stepper motor is exactly the same as most diverter valves or other motors you get in the industry. And the resistance reading is always on them. Let's see just there, 500 resistance. So when it comes to resistance reading, you roughly have 10% either way. So that is just here, look, I've drawn it for you already. So there's the stepper motor. So here, you've always got three at the back and three at the front, so here, that takes the motor that way, that takes the motor that way. So, methods of checking these. Turn the power supply on and off and it'll move to the three positions. Do a resistance check, plus or minus 10%. So the resistance readings should always be at the front of the motor. Also with these, you got one, two, also with these, 24 volt, remember, DC. So we've got that. Next thing we have is the gas valve. So remember the gas valve here just opens and closes, more of a safety device. So again, to check resistance, you must always remove the harness. And on there, remove the harness. You always remove the harness when you do a resistance reading because you're just eliminating any resistance and you're getting an accurate reading on there. So here we've got the gas valve. So to check the gas valve, various methods. The first is it's got 215 volts DC to it. The next method is to do a resistance reading. Remember, you always isolate and 
remove the harness. Two for this, you're probably going to get about 4.5 kilo. Just double check on each appliance though. Check your model, bring technical up. Always bring technical, get the figures from them. Three, isolate underneath, your boil underneath the boiler. Do a tightness test. If you're losing pressure, it tells you the gas valve is opening up and it's working. Just here you've got a shredder valve, which is at the bottom. Can you just about see that lot? So the shredder valve, open it up, drain the water out, and then what you can do, pull a bit of grease, pump it up, and the grease in the shredder valve will actually seal it.